Recording is on. Okay. So now you can see. Yes, sir. I can see. Okay. So today the objective actually we are going to install first install Kubernetes and then we'll join worker node to the master. Okay. So mostly the third one is will create a pod and uh, and a deployment okay or you can say it should be or oh, sorry okay so we are going to do these three tasks today so first of all if you have a laptop or you want to do with me so i will just copy the command in chat window and you can use that if you want else just if you want to watch me to do you can i will just explain all the commands why we have to run these commands okay so right now i have just pasted the commands uh, sorry for interrupting uh, like i think uh, some uh, disturbance in the voice uh, okay mm. are you getting any noise because you know uh, let me <clears throat> just one minute. I have just slowed down the fan speed. I think that is a noise you guys are getting. Now is it clear? Yes, sir. Now it is better. Okay, thank you. So, so whatever the commands I have just pasted in the chat box, those are actually just to prepare your. Uh, uh, system or uh, your node okay the main command is still there so now i will show you i have just one machine so these are the cloud machines okay oh actually it disconnected let me reconnect it Okay, so now this is my first node and uh, this this will be the master one, okay. So let me run those commands. I will just copy paste because, you know, uh, if I type all the commands, it will take more time. So first here, you can see I'm using curl and it is actually just adding the Docker GPG key. Okay, so just curl to this address and I am piping it to add that key to the repository. Okay, so there is nothing much. I have to give the password because yes, so it is done. So <clears throat> just now we have added Docker GPG key. Now we will add the repository. So when we will uh, uh, use that uh, to install the commands like docker and kubectl those it will uh, by default you know uh, these repository is not in the uh, with the os comes with the os so we have to add uh, manually add these uh, repository so that when we will run the command to install the docker it will check this registry and download it from there okay and then this is 
is for that, that is for docker now same thing for kubernetes because behind the scene means uh, uh, container runtime that we are going to use is uh, docker okay so this is again jpg key now again i have to use the repository so i will add the repository okay and i think that's done now once you do these uh, like adding the repository or something you have to just update your system so sudo apt get update so it will update and meanwhile okay it's done so i have another two machine that we are going to use as a worker so just give me one minute i will i have to just you know i have to do it before the session but somehow i didn't get time to do it so sorry for that Okay, so now I have this, this one is second. So this will be the uh, worker node. So again, I have to run those commands once again. And uh, I can do one thing, I will just prepare the third one as well, so that I don't have to copy again and again, okay? So just give me one minute more. So this is the third one. Now I have to just adjust these three so that you can see all at once. Okay, so uh, now I am working on these two. So I will install whatever install on the master one. So just let me copy paste these commands once again. So this is to add the GPG key. Okay, so whenever you are installing uh, Docker or Kubernetes, first you have to add a GPG key and uh, then only you can install the binaries, okay? So again, this is for wrong password. Yes. <coughs> so now I am adding the Kubernetes GPG. Same over here. And now adding the repository. 
Kubernetes repository and that's done. Now just update your system. Okay, so these two are also completed. Now I'm on 1C, so this is my master node. And now I will start installing the Docker, Kubelet, QADM, and KubeCTL. Okay, so these are the four things or that we have to install. So, oops. Whatever. Okay, uh, you know, if I keep this session idle, it actually got disconnected. So I have to reconnect. Okay, so this is the master one. And now here you can see sudo apt-get install hyphen y to just uh, it won't ask for, ask for, for the um, confirmation. So first I'm installing Docker CE. So what is the meaning of CE? It's a community addition, okay? So Docker CE 18.06.1 and the two, it's a big name. So just the version is 18.06, you can remember. And for Kubelet, I am installing 1.15.7 and QADM the same because these three should be same. Kubelet, QADM and QCTL. These are the Kubernetes uh, guys, okay? So just hit enter and it will do its job and same thing on, okay, sorry. Same thing we have to install on other worker nodes as well. Okay, so these are just a simple command. So I'm sending these commands and chat window so if you want you can just copy from there okay and keep with you or i will try my best to make a make a at least a simple cheat sheet so that you can just go through the commands so now on all three machines this is installed okay now we have one more thing, you know, these installation can, means Kubernetes and Docker. If we don't uh, hold these updates, it can, right now it can automatically uh, upgrade to the new, update to the new version, okay? So we have to actually hold the uh, update. So it won't automatically update itself, okay? So I have to make it on hold so sudo apt mark hold this is the command so i want to hold the update on docker c kubelet kubeadm kubectl so i will run these three on these three nodes oh sorry okay so now it's done let me clear the screen for all uh, sir uh, just a quick question uh, um, a cube uh, cdl and the cube uh, adm what are these two uh, components kubelet we understood as per the uh, uh, architecture but uh, what are the two components adm and uh, cube ctl is actually command Okay, so kubectl is used to fire the command. So it is a client, okay, for Kubernetes. So you, you want to communicate with your API servers, right? Or you want to ask for some information, you are going to use kubectl. So in, in Docker, we have Docker CLI, right? Yes. So whenever, so that 
that client should be installed on your desktop or uh, on on your machine so that you can uh, fire the command to the api server okay so actually this is this is a, a interface between human uh, and the api server so whatever i want to query to the api server i have to use this command kubectl okay and another one that is kubeadm like uh, yesterday i said uh, there are multiple uh, implementation of uh, kubernetes okay so in that case we have one more that is kubeadm so uh, here if i am using kubeadm there are some uh, pre install automated things happens okay so uh, i will initialize a cluster using kubeadm so it will uh, are uh, responsible for uh, generating the certificate c uh, uh, creating ca means certificate authority and copying these uh, files to the other nodes okay so when we will join this uh, worker nodes to the master so we have to use kubeadm so kubeadm will be uh, responsible for copying these the certificates from the master node to the uh, worker node okay else uh, what i have to do i have to manually copy the certificates first i have to generate the certificates okay then i have to copy it to the worker uh, to those workers you want to join to the master node or to the cluster so though uh, we we can use kubeadm that is a again a, a tool that that will help you to initialize your cluster easily okay okay sir thank you okay so let's go ahead and uh, we have hold the updates okay now the second thing is or you can say the main thing uh, whenever you are creating a cube seat uh, sorry uh, kubernetes you have to actually uh, add a rule to ip tables okay so we have to update a file and we we have to enable the ip table rules by default it is disabled okay so we have the command i will show you so here echo this uh, this part you can see net dot bridge dot bridge hyphen nf hyphen call hyphen ip tables so this should be enabled so i am what i am doing here i am just changing this value to one and uh, i am sending it this data to this file etc slash sysctl dot conf okay if you don't make it uh, enable the problem is when you will when you will join the worker node okay you will get error because whenever you join a worker node to the master there are some pre flight checks that happens okay so that uh, that is also this this thing is also checked when uh, when you are joining worker node to the master so uh, you will get an error that ip tables is not enabled so this worker node cannot be joined to the master so just remember whenever if you are getting the uh, error uh, that is related to ip tables then you have to enable it means you haven't enabled it because i i, I have gone through this error uh, one of my colleague he was uh, working on i uh, means he was creating a, a cluster and uh, he asked me that i am getting this error what should i do then i remember that we have to enable this ip table okay so i have to enable it on all the nodes i think these are also got disconnected let me reconnect it
okay so i connected to first phone i will just show you a simple block diagram uh, how our cluster is or how our cluster look like okay so just give me one minute uh, no no i am so this is these are two worker nodes so i have to again enable the ip tables on these two worker nodes as well that's done okay so whenever you are uh, uh enabling an uh, ip table or sys config so i have sys uh edit this file sys ctl so just i have to use this command or sudo sys ctl hyphen p so it will just enable the ip tables okay that's it now the main thing so these are the prerequisite that you have to do so i don't know i have uh, sent these files or not oh sorry if uh, i haven't say share these commands on okay i have done the installation part so these are the three commands more that you need so so these are the commands that are just to for uh, the to actually in a, before initializing your cube adm you have to prepare your nodes so these commands just to prepare your nodes to initialize the cluster okay so let me open the paint and uh, i will show you what or how our cluster look like so we have one node and then we have two worker nodes so this one is master node and node 1 and worker node 2 so if you guys remember for this master node has all the components that are to kubernetes control plane components okay so control plane components are installed on master node so if you guys remember these what are the component roles first one is cube controller manager then we have cube scheduler okay we have cube api server and etcd so these are the control plane components that is installed on this master node and cube ctl or kubelet and uh, container runtime so you can ask one question like uh, i have installed docker on master node as well right so 
actually that is not needed because you know on master node we we are not going to run any container okay but somehow if you are going to run any container or master node then you need to install the container runtime on master but in kubernetes actually uh, uh, you cannot run any container on master node so uh, this master node is not going to schedule any container or pods on its on its own okay on the master node it will going to uh, run those pods on worker nodes only so uh, you guys have any question so this is the actually cluster architecture that we are going to work yes sir uh, are we missing a group of queue proxy in worker node because you yes, mentioned uh, uh, yeah yes i haven't queue. mentioned that but yes you are correct uh, we have this queue proxy over here as well so these are the four so cube ctl actually you know uh, it is just to uh, run the command so it is not necessary to install on the worker node you can uh, uh, you can install uh, cube ctl on a remote system as well so if you have you are working from a laptop so if you don't want to connect to the worker node and you want to fire the commands from your uh, laptop then you have to install this kubectl but before that you should have a, a tunnel between your uh, means you are able to connect to you, the worker nodes or master nodes from your laptops okay if you can do that you can install kubectl and uh, there are some prerequisite again that you have to uh, run the some commands like creating some context and other things then only you can use it from the remote so that is actually a hard way to do it so uh, at the end i will show you means after the uh once we will finish the session uh session not the session uh the whole Q kubernetes guys then i will show you at the end if you are guys interested so right now we have this type of architecture means our cluster architecture and we are going to work uh further with with this configuration only okay so now any question no so, sorry. okay i am going to initialize my cluster so this is not my this is our cluster okay so the again it has a simple command that we have in docker so in docker if you guys remember to initialize a swarm mode, we have one uh, one command that is docker swarm init, right? So here again we have command that's called oh got disconnected. So let me just reconnect. I think there should be a option to in, increase the idle time. I have to check that because it is taking. OK. So you guys can see this command sudo. So we have to run this command as a root that's why i have used sudo then this is the command qvdm so you ask that why we are using uh, we have installed qvdm because you know in yesterday session i have shown you that we can uh, initialize our cluster using min mini cube right so in the same way we can use qvdm to initialize the cluster okay so if you are using qvdm it means like uh, uh, the certificates and uh, default service accounts, those things are uh, being created using QADM. So you don't have to create those uh, default service account tokens, certificates. Okay. And once I will hit enter, you will see all the details that is that this QADM is doing. So those things, if you want to do by yourself, then you don't have to use QADM. But if you want to automate those things, so, QVDM have just automated those things, so you don't have to do it manually. Okay. 
So just remember that thing. So the command is init. And then here is a option that is pod network cider. So we have given a cider value that the pod is going to use. So the pod IP should be in this range. So 10.254.0.0 slash 16. So these two last two octet will be changed, but the same 10.254.244 uh, is the same for all your pods. Okay, so it will just assign these this IP to your pod. Okay. Any question? Or I hit enter. Okay. So here you can see pre-flight checks, running pre-flight checks. There is some warning, but we can ignore the warning. There should not be error. If you got uh, error, then uh, we have to troubleshoot that error and then again you have to run the command so just wait for a few minutes and it will be ready so here you can see search 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 so these are generating the certificates for cube proxy cube controller manager Okay, so actually it will generate all the certificates that is needed to communicate to each other. So these these components actually also use the certificates to con uh, to talk to each other. Okay, so that's why we need the those certificates. So let me zoom it. Okay, that is. So if I scroll up first, it do some did some pre flight checks, okay, and then kubelet starts. So first of all, you have to start the kubelet, and then this starting starting activating the kubelet. Or here you can see using certificate directory folder slash etc slash kubernetes slash pki. Okay, generating CA certificate, generating API server certificate and key. API ser server serving cert is signed for DNS names. Okay, so these things, you know, if you want to do by yourself, then you can. But actually, this is called a hard way to do the uh, do to install the Kubernetes. Okay, and uh, it will take uh, about. Uh, more than an hour or two or three hours to generate all the certificates. And if there is any single mistake, your cluster will not start. OK, that's why we use mostly we use the pre built solutions. So QBDM is also a pre built solution. OK, so it has generated some certificates and here it bootstrap the tokens. OK. It has created the RVAC rules. So these are, uh, if you guys interested, uh, I will, means we can do some session uh, after the Kubernetes. So just I will show you how to do it by uh, uh, hard way, or means we are we will going to generate those certificates by uh, by, by our own, and uh, we will place those certificates and will install the binaries by ourselves so those things we have to do and it will take about three to four session to complete it so that's a different thing <clears throat> so today uh, we have just uh, install uh, initialize our cluster using a single node so here you can see to start using your cluster you need to run the following as a regular user okay so what it will do is it will create a directory dot cube that is a hidden directory and here you can see it is going to copy the admin dot conf to my directory okay then only i can use this cluster otherwise i am not able to use this cluster okay got it or again i have to change the ownership as well so to use this cluster 
first I have to run these three commands and I think that's done. And then you should now deploy a pod network to the cluster. Again here, if you don't apply any pod network to your cluster, it is not going to work. Okay. And then you can join any number of worker nodes by running the following on each as root. So at the end, I have to install the run this command on the worker nodes okay so for what uh just to confirm like uh, you guys are uh, means I, am i audible otherwise you know sometimes it uh, got disconnected and i thought yes, everything sir. is yes, okay, okay. Yes. thank because, you yeah so uh here this thing is done and now i have to apply any pod network okay so there are multiple uh, plugins so you, you have you guys heard about bibnet flannel calico so actually these are the uh, pod network and uh, these are the plugins by third party so uh, we have to use any of the uh, any of the pod network you can use flannel bibnet calico whatever you want but again uh, it it has actually a yaml file and there are multiple configuration are written in the yaml file so uh, this is for uh, networking guys if they want to create a network by yourself then they can but that is actually not easy to do so mostly we use any cni network overlay okay so in docker we have uh learn about the overlay network okay so those networking things in docker is come by default but for in kubernetes you have to manually install the or manually implement the network okay so till now, if I do kubectl get pods, no resources found, okay? But if I do hyphen hyphen all name spaces, now here you can see some output. So let me run this command once again. So here you can see etcd is running. Okay. So you know I have used kubeadm, so these components are installed automatically. Otherwise, you know I have to manually install these components one by one. Okay. So why we use kubeadm? I think now you guys have some uh, inform uh, knowledge about this. Why we use kubeadm? Okay. Then this is the Kube API that is also running. Kube controller is also running. Kube proxy is also running. Okay, but actually, uh, a Kube scheduler is also running. So what is missing here is core DNS that is in pending state. So why it is in pending state? Because we haven't implemented any network pod network. Okay. So now we are going to implement the pod network. So let me just copy and uh, what we are using is flannel. Okay, so there is nothing, just there is a, a YAML file that is on this GitHub repository. Okay, so I'm just going to apply this YAML file and it will implement the for us so sarabjit the uh, panel is basically a type of pod yes it will also run as a pod so that's why i have shown you these these pods and now if i run the command kubectl get pods okay you will see some more 
so i think that is a uh, yes so here you can see q flannel so this is the network pod so again it is running as a pod so actually from here you can see pod security policy cluster role so these things are written in this yaml file that we have applied so if you want to know like what is there inside the yaml file you can just go to the google and just hit enter you will get the this is what it has okay so if you are interested you can go each of the line and understood like what is there in the yaml file okay so but here just for your information you have to apply uh, any of the networking or network port and uh, that is not mandatory to use the flannel you can use the different one like bibnet and uh, calico there are uh, uh, aci as well from uh, from uh, what is called cisco so it depends so did, you have yes uh, i just uh, wanted to know flannel and these network ports mm -hmm. are they are they used to communicate to the worker nodes yes actually this is this is a pod network okay so when you are going to create a pod different pods like two or three multiple pods then there should be something uh, a networking happens okay so to communicate those pods to pods to each other there is there should be a network so those pods are going to use flannel okay for networking so sarabjit so, is uh, flannel we can say it as a cni connect uh, container yes. network uh, interface yes yes interface this is this is the cni okay Thanks. yes and again uh, that you are saying that the worker node yes that is also for the worker nodes as well because you know uh, actually i want to show you before uh, means first i want to join these worker nodes to the master and then i will implement the network pod but i have done uh, just support it because you know uh, okay so just go ahead and uh, let me join the worker nodes then i will show you what are the differences if you don't implement the flannel or any of the cni network so, okay uh, Sar sarabjit uh, communication between api server etcd and uh, q control manager mm -hmm. don't communicate uh, through flannel is it like that and uh, is important for them to communicate between themselves uh, for for those networks i think no Okay. Okay. This is only for the worker nodes and the pods. Oh. They have their own configurations. And, uh, the uh, the components that you are saying, uh, the control plane, those yes. are actually yes. So th those components can use the the, the same network like uh, flannel, but uh, uh, I'm not sure that without that with the, that will work or not. But I think. We need a CNI. So my answer is yes. Those components will also use the flannel, okay? okay. Because without any CNI means if you haven't install uh, implement any CI CNI, then your cluster will not work. So to uh, run the cluster, you need any CNI. So yes, those components uh, will. Sort of use. Uh, sort of yes. Just to. Yeah. Just a concern, like uh, you said, uh, we need. Uh, I mean, first of all, uh, we have installed that CNI in our mas master node, and uh, generally yeah. we don't have ports in master node, isn't it? So ports are basically uh, reside in the worker nodes, as far yeah. as I understand. Yes, so yes. To, to install this uh, this kind of CNI is in master node because uh, what I uh, think I'm not sure about it yeah. is. Uh, control plane things like stuff like C, uh, etcd and the control manager and all those stuff they can mm -hmm. communicate using the bridge network or that is something different 
so this api server is running as a pod controller manager is running as a pod oh, yes. and uh, proxy oh, yes. is a pod scheduler oh, is running so as a pod etc is also oh, just I, yes we do we do need ci tni uh, if yes. you, if we have, if these all are pods then definitely we need cni to uh, communicate with them. yes yes that's why okay. i said at the end because you know when i was answering then i remember like uh, without cni those are also not going to work okay, okay. and uh, let me oh i am getting a problem with just if i leave it i don't it so i will just run the command once again and uh, i have uh, I have mistaken one thing. Uh, I haven't copied the join command. Okay, so now I have to show you how to generate the command. So you guys have any idea about like you know I have just missed that kubeadm uh, join command, right? And I. i haven't copy that command so now i want to connect these uh, worker node to the master i need that command right so now i have to generate the command so do you know so help is very useful to get help so here you will find how to generate the token so here you can see qvdn join token manage bootstrap token so using token qvdm token you can regenerate your tokens so qvdm token again i need help so what i can do is i can create a bootstrap token i can delete i can generate i can list okay and these are the flags that we can use like dry run help so dry run is just uh, whether to enable dry run mode or not so it will uh, not the command will not do anything just uh, dry run so what will happen that will show you what will happen if you run this command okay so now uh, i just want to list the token so the command is qvdm token list okay so oh, here i want to generate it so here this is the token okay and uh, we need a sha key as well so the default bootstrap token generated by qvdm so this is the token that is generated by qvdm okay and we can also generate the token and there is also one more command to uh, actually uh, generate a qvdm join token so just give me one minute i will show you qvdm join i can help So from here actually you can generate or q using qvdm you can 
do many things like troubleshooting the your clusters there are multiple flags so here is a discovery token discovery token string so we need this discovery token string actually okay so what i have to run uh, command is qvdm uh, let me just google it fast because i just forgot the command uh, qvdm join token generate okay so what i can do is uh, i can create a new token okay so if i run q adm token list so i have this token and uh, if i want to generate it I need a token create. <clears throat> yes, so command. What we have is Q ADM token. Okay, and we have uh, if I do. iPhone iPhone help escape pedals okay create iPhone iPhone help so whenever you Whenever you forget any command, you can use the hyphen hyphen flag, but you should have uh, at least some understanding where to use hyphen hyphen help. Okay. So I can use cube ADM token list hyphen hyphen uh, or token. Actually, it will use create because uh, if you are using list there is no option to print the whole command so if i do token list hyphen hyphen help here you can see there is no flag to list the whole command okay so what we are going to use is, is cube adm token create and then iphone iphone print join command so it will not just create a token but it will uh come print out whole command okay so here you can see this is the whole command and this is the discovery path that i was i want to see so uh I have this QADM token list. So you can see now there are two tokens. One is that, that I have just generated. So this one, this one, and here you can see this is generated by this one, the default bootstrap token, but this is generated by me. Okay, so there is no description. So you this is only the TTL is 23 hours after 23 hours 
if there are any other nodes that you want to join in the cluster in that case you have to create a new token okay so that's why i have shown this command so you whenever you you miss that join token you can generate using qvdm token create print join command so this is actually a very good command to remember because the token that have generated is only <clears throat> only uh, valid uh, uh, valid till 23 hours okay so this is not necessary like you have just created a cluster and you are going to join the worker nodes okay so there are some chances that you want to join the worker nodes later in that case you need this command so let me just log into the worker node and we will run the oops uh by mistake i just closed the master window so uh till now do you have any question or because we are just the last thing that i have to do is join the worker node to the cluster okay that that's it for today actually i was not that much prepared So sister, do you know like uh, we can increase the time of the idle session in Putti? Because that is actually painful means I am just disconnecting again and again. And I have to log in the, to the system once again. But... Project right click or uh i think there there must be a some settings the team settings in settings below shared sessions oh uh, change says okay yeah yeah now go to window Windows, Windows, Windows. Okay. Lines of scroll. Increase the lines of scroll back. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is not for. Uh, it will just increase the line, but you know, uh, I just increase the idle session time because it, when I just key, leave it idle, it just do, the session got disconnected, and I have to join the session once again. That's why I'm asking. Okay, so I will check that later. So QVDM again, I have to check for that uh, list. So QVDM token create and then print join command. So this is the whole command. And I will just copy this in a notepad because i don't know there is a line break or something okay there is no line break Sorry. yes you can, go, you can go to connection right click on that change settings connection okay Seconds between keep alive. It's increased to the second. Where, where? Yeah, that only. Zero to turn off. Make Sending it five. Keep session alive. Zero to turn off. Are you okay. sure, Chris? Uh, if you change change the value over here, then the session will not get timed out. 
Okay, make it five and let's see. Yes, yes, I think it's uh, because it's uh, less uh, written sending of a null packet to keep session active. So yes, if I uh, make it one, it will continuously send some null packets so that my session will be keep alive. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So now uh, I have just copied the QBDM join token. Okay. And keep keep in mind that there should not be any line break otherwise your command will not work okay so now before that if i run command kubectl get nodes okay so here uh, in docker what we have i uh, mean the command is like uh, docker node ls okay but kubectl uh, in kubernetes you know just uh, they have changed like if you want to list the node, you have to write kubectl get nodes, kubectl get service, kubectl get deployments. But in Kubernetes, uh, Docker, we have Docker and uh, uh, Docker container ls. OK, so there is just uh, the changes in the command. But I think kubectl is more easy, like uh, kubectl. What I need is, so I, I want to get some nodes details so kubectl get nodes so here you can see only one right now one server is there listed okay as a master so once i will hit enter oops there is a uh, oh sorry actually whenever you are running this command you sh should you must have sudo access so i will just copy this one okay it will uh, copy from here and i have to use sudo okay so it will again go for some pre-flight checks and if everything is is fine then it will join the worker in the cluster okay so i will do the same thing on uh, and again, I have the same issue. <laughs> I just got disconnected. Give me one minute. I have just disconnected from 2C. So let me. OK. So. If pre-flight checks are right, then you can so again let's see over here in the 2C. It is checking the nodes first pre-flight running pre-flight checks. Error execution phase pre-flight, some fatal errors occurred. Okay, actually, that is where I haven't used the sudo. So where, 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 where? Let me scroll up a little bit. Okay, so I have started from here. So there is a warning. That warning is also in the master as well. So we can ignore that. What, what it says is detected C group FS as the Docker C group driver. The recommended driver is system D. So the driver is using a C group FS and I'm not familiar with this word. So here is the guide and you can go to this guide and learn about this. So I think there are some runtime. It is related to container runtime issue. But yes, that is a warning then we can ignore it. And reading configuration from the cluster you can look at this configuration file with kubectl hyphen n cube system get cm cube config oml okay downloading configuration from the here here you can see uh, downloading configuration for the kubelet from the kubelet config 1.15 config map in the cube system namespace so actually you know uh, these things that I said, we have to do it manually, means copying these configuration to the worker nodes. Okay, so those things 
you have to do manually if you are using a custom installation of kubernetes but if you are using pre-built solution like kubedm menu cube then these things you don't have to do these are automated okay so here again it is started the kubelet once copy from the master node and uh, here you can see this node has joined the cluster and certificate signing request was sent to api server and a response was received so it has sent some uh, certificate so when it's when it is sending the certificate request so the ca will us give it a a certificate to this node to communicate to the api server okay otherwise it will not able to connect to the api server so if you are doing by, uh, from uh, as a custom installation again you have to copy these certificates manually okay otherwise your uh, cluster will not start so bootstrapping of the cluster is very easy if you are using a pre-built solution so these are the same on this this node as well worker node so now if i run the command get nodes now you can see there are three nodes right one is master and uh, uh, these are the workers where the role is just written none okay so whenever it is written as none it means it is a worker node okay and uh, these are the version that it has like 1.15.7 and uh, to get the information about your api server you have a command i think q adm get cluster node get cluster status oh okay so whenever i forget any command i just run hyphen hyphen help and i will remember the command so token upgrade version yes that is q adm version so you can see this version over here it's a major one 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 point one five okay so that's why it was written 1.15 okay so that's it for today i think and uh, from next session we will create a parts and all the other things like connecting to the kuba api servers or do you want to create a simple part today uh, that's it for today just let me know so that i will continue or We'll wrap up the session. I am okay with you. I mean, we can go ahead. Uh, I mean, from my part, I'm ready. Okay. Yes, okay. Ready. Okay. So you want, you guys want to create a simple deployment, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So again, let me. I think that thing doesn't work because again. I just got disconnected. May increase to five minutes. You only wait one minute. So that means a minute because I thought uh, just true and false. That means. I thought it is true or false. And it changed to what, zero. Oh, connection aborted. Uh, for, for, uh, I will tell you. I mean, I forgot I mean, the settings way to do it. I will let you know in the next session. But uh, I would suggest you to use uh, more X instead of using OT. You can use uh, okay, okay. Yeah, I think that uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So in the next session, I will use that one. Thank you. Because for uh, in the don't don't have to i mean there, there is no no such uh, timeout issue mm -hmm. okay okay so okay so uh, whatever i will do is on the 
on the master node okay so if i right right now if i run the command qctl get pods i will get nothing okay command is wrong so no resources found okay so by default you know there is a that's called namespace in in kubernetes we have namespace to segregate the um, different uh, different uh, what is called application or or uh, if someone is working on the different uh, namespace they can create their own namespace, namespace and uh, run the testing or whatever so just to uh, it's a it's a virtual group you can say so if i do kubectl get namespace so these are the some namespaces it has so whatever the cube components are running those are running in cube system namespaces okay and if you have not specify any namespace then by default it will run under this default okay and here if i run this command kubectl get pods it means it is checking in the default namespace okay so i can create a new space and uh, whatever the deployment and services that i am creating i can put it in, in my namespace so this just uh, for uh, 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 you can say a logical group uh, to keep the things separate of to the others like if there are multiple services running okay so uh, the whatever the service deployment and uh, volumes that you will create you just want to be with that uh, namespace so it is easy to handle okay and whenever you want you don't want uh, that uh, the service and volumes you can just delete the namespace it will delete all the uh, services deployment and whatever under the namespace so it is easy to ha handle so if you are if you are familiar with uh, any like uh, azure uh, public cloud there is a called a resource a resource group so it is same like a resource group okay namespaces so now if i just want to create a deployment so here if i run this command kubectl run okay and uh, i want to run nginx hyphen hyphen i want to use image nginx okay and now if i hit enter what it will do here you can see so in 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 docker when we run docker run command it just create a container right but in kubernetes if you run this command kubectl it is going to create a deployment but yes there is a thing that is written that uh, deployment apps dot v1 is deprecated and will be removed in future version use kubectl run hyphen hyphen generate or kube create instead so here i can run kube create in, uh, instead of kubectl run okay but yes if i do kubectl get pods you will see a pod so you can see now there is one pod that is running and uh, right now it is running like a like a container but this is called pod so here you can see one slash one okay what does it mean it means this pod has one container and, and that is running okay like yesterday i said there are multiple containers in one pod okay and uh, yes if you want to see if i do kubectl get kubectl get pods and uh, hyphen n hyphen n means uh, namespace and i want to see the name is the pods that is under kubectm namespace so kube system namespace has these many pods and after implementing the cni you can see core dns is running before that core dns was in pending state okay 
so what i was talking actually there are two out of two you can see but here no where it is one by one so these pods have one container inside these pods okay so just if i just uh, let me rep change the replica set then it will change to two so if i run kubectl get so you can scale the deployment so if i do kubectl get deployments i have one nginx deployment and that is ready so if i want to scale up there is a command kubectl de scale deployments i think kubectl deployment nginx Mm -hmm. Something is missing. Kubectl. Uh, yes, so I have to give this replica equal to what I need. Okay. So I want to scale deployment nginx and I want replica equal to two so you can see now nginx is scaled so if i now do qctl get pods there is two pod is running and uh, those are running in the same deployment so if i do qctl get deployments you can see now it's written two out of two okay and uh, main thing that uh, i want to show you is one out of one so whenever you want to take this as a yaml right now i haven't uh, run uh, write any yaml file right but i want to output it as a yaml i can do it like kubectl get pods and then i have to write the pod name and uh, hyphen o so now you can see now i am getting this output in a yaml file so api version is v1 kind is pod metadata creation time label so this is the default label and run colon nginx so here you can see all the details of your pods so here you can see under the spec containers images nginx name is nginx resources volume mounts so these are the default because uh, you can specify these things and uh, we, that we are going to learn in for the session how to uh, create our own because these are the defaults one okay so that's it from my side if i just uh, one more thing i want to show you kubectl get pods and here you can see there is no detail on which node it is running okay so if you want to see that you have to use hyphen o that is output and i want it as a byte so now you can see it is running on 1.2 uh, actually the, that is the ip of the pod here is the node one so it uh, one is running on 3c another one is running on 2c okay and uh, let me show you like this so here you can see the all the details so th this is the ip address so uh, like I said, I have given the cider of 10.244.0.0 uh, slash 16. That's why it has taken 10.254. But other these are the chosen by the uh, your uh, Kubernetes. Okay. 
so i think that's it from my side till now and uh, from next session we will learn about how to create pods using yaml file and how we will apply those yaml files in kubernetes okay so any question or shall we wrap up no sarabjit uh, i would request if you can share us the cheat sheet for i mean yes, the, I, all the command yes. yes i i will try i will try actually but uh, uh, when uh, i can do it i don't know means today to that is not possible but in next session before the next session i will 